Hello again my fellow Kerbonauts, and in this episode of Realism we're going to try and go all the way to the moon. Anyway, I've got a slightly bigger rocket, the SR4, still with the simple rocket name because they've all got small parts. I think we'll move on from that sometime soon though. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get all the way to the moon, get some more science, unlock some more stuff in the tech tree. And then uh, once we've done that, we'll be able to start building out even further, branching out, building up big uh, communication networks and things. Because we're not going to go to Mars or Juno or whatever. Uh, with Kerbals first, we need to be a bit more careful than that. That's a bit too high risk, I think. So, we're going to start branching out a bit more with uh, probes and things sometime soon. Maybe do a couple more missions within the Kerbal um, Kerbin system, I guess. Um, and then once we've sort of got enough science, then we'll start building up those communication networks, things like that. Because we do have remote tech installed, which means we kind of need to do that. Just, you know, so that we can actually control probes that are far away. Anyway, you can see we're just making a gravity turn. It's a bit of a late gravity turn, but it works. And that's just because sometimes, uh, this rocket in particular, because it has quite a heavy lander at the front, which is quite wide, that actually sort of caused it to be not very aerodynamic, basically. Meaning that we had to um, try not to turn too much, and that meant that we ended up finishing the gravity turn a little bit later. Um, but it still worked fine. We got into a decent orbit, although it maybe wasn't quite as efficient as it could have been. Uh, but it works, so we're okay. And we've still got Jebediah, we're still safe. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to point out that I did film this uh, while live streaming. And I'm sorry I couldn't put up a video while I was live streaming. Um, you know, like a video to say that I'm live streaming. Because YouTube wouldn't process it. Um, it. It was completely out of my control. I tried literally about five times to try and make a little video with the YouTube video editor and then put that up just like a, you know, basically a picture in the background with some text in front of it to say, I'm live streaming, link in, descri in description. Literally, it would have been that basic. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't process the video. Uh, you literally left it for about 20 minutes and nothing happened. Even though last time I live streamed, I did the exact same thing and it took about two minutes and worked fine. So, I don't know, I'm sorry about that, there's not really much I could do. But anyway, um, you can see we've already started using our lander stage, and that was kind of worrying, but uh, I thought, well, we may as well go for a shot at the moon anyway, see how close we can get. So I just decided to give it a shot, basically. Uh, sorry about launching in the dark, I kind of tried this launch a couple of times and it flipped with the whole fire and space thing, I just had to parachute down. Um, so... I kind of decided to just get on with it and launch in the dark, not even worry about it. So I have applied some color correction to hopefully make it a bit easier to see because YouTube does seem to darken the video even more than it was dark in the first place, if that makes sense. Anyway, there we go. I have also fixed deadly re-entry. Uh, it wasn't working properly, but I fixed it. We now have all the deadly re-entry components working properly. And yeah, that all worked completely fine. So we did have to worry a little bit more about our landing when we came back. Because spoilers, we do. Anyway, uh, yeah, so now I've just sort of used that old rule of thumb where if you can see the moon on the horizon and you start burning to try and get a trajectory that's going to take us somewhere near the moon. And I just want to actually decide to go for a reasonably close tra trajectory. But I am going to circularize around the moon anyway, um, just to see how much fuel we have as well after we've done that, because I don't want to commit to a landing straight away if we if I don't think we have enough fuel. Um, but if I circularize around the moon, that's also going to let me pick a nice landing spot, somewhere that's probably not in the dark, or preferably not completely in the dark. Uh, if you circularize as well, you can usually get yourself landed in a position which is easier to burn, so that you come out of the moon's sphere of influence in the right direction, because if you do that, then that makes your return a lot more efficient as well. So that's what I decide to do, circularize first. And at this point I'm looking at my fuel and thinking, well actually it's not going to take that much um, to land. I probably can land. So, And you can see I was just pointing out with the cursor actually, that's where I think I'm going to try and land. It's just around here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to try. Because we're low enough all the time now, pretty much with this sort of 10 kilometer orbit, that we can just land straight away, just start burning and land. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about that, and I'm basically waiting for the sun to come over the horizon so that I know it's going to be light where I land, and that's now. I just try and turn around and bring us down. There we go. So, 
This landing was fairly boring to be honest, I didn't end up coming down on a hill though, which is always fun. Um, I kind of hate landing on hills actually. Uh, it's one of the more difficult ways to land. Uh, suicide burns are probably easier than landing on hills, if I'm totally honest. Because when you land on a hill, you're coming straight down, but you almost need to launch yourself into the ground so that you're sort of hitting the ground parallel with the ground. And that's really quite difficult to do. So you'll see the first time here I burn, slow myself down, fine. It's just that because I don't come down parallel with the ground, I end up yeah, bouncing away again, which is fine. Doesn't really make any difference. I've got plenty of landing legs um, because I wasn't sure if I was going to make it to completely land on this stage and I just about did. We've got hardly any fuel left. But there we go, we get out and do a little flag planting and it's one small hop because obviously Kerbals kind of have trouble stepping really when we're on the moon. So yep, we do that, take a EVA report and also a surface sample and those get us a reasonable amount of science, a pretty good amount of science. Then we've also got to do the um, we've also got to do the materials bay and the goo containment units, which we use a bit later on as well. We don't use two of them now because that'd be kind of silly. And there we go. The materials bay is on its own is worth a hundred science, which I'd say is pretty good. Um, so yeah, now all that's left to do is return home, and we'll do some science along the way as well, I guess. But yeah, you can see we ran out of fuel in those, so I just split them off, and uh, yeah, it looked pretty cool, I think. And now it's just a case of pointing ourselves in the right direction so that we end up leaving the moon's sphere of influence in the opposite direction the moon's traveling. I've explained this so many times I'm not even going to bother explaining it anymore. Anyway, you can see that big red dot there by the way, if you don't know that's basically the KSC and that red dot is there because of remote tech which sees KSC as a transmission place because it is. So that's why that's there and that's why um, and yeah, that's something we're going to have to worry about a bit more fairly soon. We're going to set up probably a set of satellites in geostationary orbit, or thereabouts. And then maybe a set further out, I don't know, we'll see. Probably a set further out, three of them maybe, with with uh, larger antennae, so that they can um, transmit to other places like Juna and Eve. I'm not really sure how we'll get from... I'm not really sure uh, how big the satellites are going to need to get. To transmit any further than that because that's a pretty long way but we'll see what we can do anyway um, so now I'm doing another one of the uh, goo containment units thing mystery goo containment units uh, just to get a bit more science out of this mission you know an extra 10 20 signs and uh, yeah we managed to unlock a reasonable amount of stuff at the end with what we got so get back in and from here is just a case of bringing us down safely um, I decided, because I knew Deadly Reentry was completely working now, we probably were going to have more trouble landing than before, considering Deadly Reentry wasn't working before, it didn't install properly, even though there was a Deadly Reentry folder in my KSP directory. Um, basically, I'm bringing it down, and I've decided instead of sort of just coming straight down from that height, where you're going to have a lot of sort of orbital energy, I guess, I decided to circularize at my periapsis or you know bring my apoapsis down a bit so I've got a bit less orbital energy, which is going to mean that the the deadly reentry is slightly less deadly, which is always a good thing. So there we go. You can see I'm just burning away because I've got plenty of extra fuel actually. We managed to make it reasonably easily because the lander isn't too heavy, and the LV LV 909s are reasonably efficient as well as little engines that we're using, so they do a pretty good job. I'm kind of looking forward though to soon when I will hopefully be able to have some slightly bigger rockets. But to be honest, we don't even really need them yet because the only reason we'd need bigger rockets is if we're going to go further than the Kerbin system or if we want to take more Kerbals somewhere. Um, we might do a big moon mission sometime fairly soon, maybe the next episode, maybe the one after that. Uh, depends when we manage to unlock some slightly bigger parts. And basically in that mission, we're going to go to multiple places on the moon so that we get lots of science because that's what we want right now. We want to get as much science as we can so we've got the best technology possible to build up our satellite network. And yeah, that's that's what we're aiming for, I guess. So here we go. We're going in for our final approach. We're also going to 
probably burn retrograde a little bit, but you'll see already that this thing's spinning around and that's because it actually aerodynamically wants to point head first, which is a little bit of a problem later on, but it's nothing too bad. Um, we managed to overcome that. It's not too big a deal really. So we managed to use SAS just to try and hold it in that position because it is reasonably stable in that position. It's almost like flying an unstable plane or trying to fly a plane backwards, I guess. It's probably a better analogy. But uh, yeah, it does work and we're definitely coming down this time round. And we don't have too much orbital energy either, which is good. I don't think we're going to burn up this time. Um, but I did, just in case, um, I actually took all the signs out of the goo canisters and things. I think you probably saw that. Um, I took it all out and put it in the command pod so that in case something does catch fire and explode, as long as it's not the command pod, we'll be fine. Uh, because obviously if the command pod goes, then the mission's kind of over anyway. But yeah, I do have a couple more parachutes attached to this little lander as well. I've got uh, two of them on, uh, two radial parachutes on the materials bay and then one on the top of the rocket itself on the top of the command pod. And you'll see that it was a bit weird. As soon as I stopped time warping, we started going in the right direction. I think that's just the way that Ferrum works. It's a bit strange. But there we go. And you can see it's pointing the wrong way around now, but obviously when we then fully deploy the parachutes, which is going to be in a few seconds from now, uh, we'll be probably pulled around the right way. And yeah, those that G-force there probably wouldn't have been too good for Jeb, but he seems okay with it. Uh, I think if it was any other Kerbal, it might have been a problem. But Jeb, nah, he's fine. Just so you know, this is all at two times speed, the whole mission and everything, I've tried to do it two times speed, just because that's probably the best uh, speed to do it. But yeah, um, that's kind of what I decided to do. Anyway, from that we managed to get 406 signs, which I'd say is pretty good, or sorry, 370 signs, but that brings us up to 406 in total. So that's quite a good amount, we unlock some slightly heavier rocketry, um, Not we don't go for the really heavy rocketry yet. We do some, we also unlock some of the plane type stuff. Because I don't want to push too far in one direction, I want to sort of spread up, make sure we have all the technology re up to a reasonably decent level. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video guys, we unlock a couple more things. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, as always, if you like the video, please do like the video. And if you are not a subscriber to my channel, I'd like to say as well, it'd be nice if you could subscribe. But anyway, thanks for watching, as always, and have a nice day.